Hi, Phoenix Rising here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the PTR-91 and Sightmark Wraith. Uh, this is part two of the PTR-91 videos, and as a part of this we're going to be doing our break-in, we're going to be doing the Wraith in use, and our accuracy testing with the PTR both uh, early in the break-in and post-break-in. So uh, stay tuned, this ended up being a lot more about the Wraith than I wanted it to, uh, hence the Wraith in the title so prominently. But uh, if you want to jump around, uh, here's a video index to be able to do that. It is a long video, but uh, a lot of good content in here. So thanks for watching. Okay, so here we are at the range. And got the rifle, got all our cleaning supplies to start the break-in process. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put one 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 round down range. Then we're going to go ahead and clean the bore and see how this thing goes. So first round. Okay. Okay, uh, figured I might as well show the little cleaning process here as a part of this, so sorry for the bad camera angle and lighting. I have no control over the sun nor the position of this fixed bench. Again, this goes back to uh, taking a look at how easy it is to disassemble this thing. Okay, so I'm happy that we are satisfactory clean, nothing amiss. And there we go, locked in. Alright, come on now. There we go. Hold that in place. There you go, ready to go for the next round. Okay, we're back again. Round two. Okay, praise the Lord, hallelujah, this is the tenth round, and after which we get to shoot a little bit rather than shoot one clean. Okay, round number ten. Notice it's getting a little easier to charge, or appears to be. Okay, let's talk about the Sight Mark Wraith. I hope to be doing a separate video later on that'll cover all this more in depth. But in the meantime, if you're thinking about buying one, uh, please watch this because this thing tended to be problematic for me and you might just have a change of heart. Okay, we're going to start looking at the backyard and I wanted to show you uh, the rubber banding that you're going to experience when you're panning with this thing rapidly or moving it you know, side to side. Uh, there's my rubber shed uh, in the backyard. Uh, keep in mind, if you're going to be trying to track closer in fast-moving targets, uh, you're going to experience that, okay? Now, 
Uh, here we are at the range, 100 yard range, and you're going to be looking at a full size silhouette with three or four inch bullseyes on it, and we're zooming in digitally. Uh, the Sightmark Wraith has a 4x optical zoom and up to 8x digital, although that's a gimmick. Here we are at 5x digital zoom or 20x magnification, and to me, that is unusable. Okay, that's just unusable. Uh, here we are at 3x digital zoom or 12x magnification, which I consider to be the, the practical limits of the scope. Still an ugly picture, not very pleasant to look through. And keep in mind, you're seeing it in 1080p on the screen, but you're looking at it in 720p through the viewfinder. Okay, so uh, yeah, very limited there. Some other issues we had, I had focus shifting a lot at various points using the Wraith on the PTR. And if you're going to use it for hog hunting or, tr or expect to get a quick second shot on a game animal, you might miss those opportunities because this, this, the sight's going to go out of focus, okay? I also had a point of impact shift that was a big deal. Uh, as I was testing ammunition, and you'll see it uh, as we go through the process here, are the results of it. So let's just say I'm not a big fan of the Wraith at this point. Uh, I also had the scope lock up on me when I was recording video to where I had to pull the battery cap off to, to, and to power it down and regain control of it, meaning I could see what was going on, but I couldn't stop recording. I couldn't go into the menu. I couldn't change zooms. I couldn't do anything. Okay, uh, that's another issue. And the sight in process didn't quite go as advertised. Uh, Sometimes it tended to overshoot, so that's not as flawless as it would appear either. All that being said, here's some sight in general notes. Uh, first off, when you go in to change your sight in point, always write your X and Y numbers down that are on the screen because it's real easy to unintentionally save settings, which will throw you off. Uh, also pay attention to the limits that I have posted on the screen here. And when you get to those points, you'll need to save and then re shoot and then go from there because as soon as you go past those the view is going to shift and that'll mess you up and if you do go past those lastly what's going to happen beyond the, the 80, 80 or 45 is that your uh, crosshairs are going to start shifting in your view screen to where they're no longer centered okay uh, so there you go wraith sight in tips now uh, all that being said we're going to do our initial ammo tests uh, at the point of having the Wraith remounted, recited in. We're at 40 rounds through the PTR. Uh, scope's been torqued 35 inch pounds on the uh, rails. And uh, we're going to be using our four ammunition types, and, and I'll talk about them a little later. But here are our ammunition types. And the big thing is we'll do five round groups. And uh, as we go through the process, we'll do five round groups of each ammunition. Then we'll come back through in the opposite order to eliminate any variables from barrel warming or anything like that. And we'll be cleaning between each of the five round groups. So with all that being said, let's do some testing. Uh, I know I went over this in the first video, but I guess since this is a different video, we'll just we'll go through it this way. Okay, uh, the gun sighted in with tall. 150 grain full metal jacket. This is our uh, this is our go-to standard because it's dirty and it's cheap. Okay, uh, so we're gonna do a sight back in with this. Then use this box for our accuracy check. And then we also have a box of Winchester Super X 308 180 grain PowerPoint that we're gonna use. A box of Federal Power Shock 180 grain soft point. And lastly, I didn't um, uh, this one I didn't mention in the first video, but I decided to throw in a box of this uh, Silver Bear 308 145 grain full metal jacket uh, as well. So we've got two cheaper steel case and two hunting loads that we're going to actually do our accuracy testing with. And we're only going to shoot half a box of each of these. Then we'll come back at the end of the break-in and do... Uh, the other half to see what's changed. Okay, here's we're at the hundred yard range and we'll just
breaking up the brass while I was waiting for the rifle to cool. And I don't know if I can get this thing even uh, to where we can see this. I may have to take pictures of it and interlace it in here. But when you're looking at this, let me get this. Now, not that's not just dirt, okay? That is actually the brass formed into the fluting on this shell casing. Uh, kind of hard to see, but you can actually... I'm getting the right angle here. You can actually see the uh, see the see where it's actually. I mean, this is ridge. You could feel this. I mean, you could, you could make a knurled knob out of this for Pete's sake. Uh, so yeah, I mean that is. Uh, you can really see the depth in that. Looking at it this way, so. Ooh, wow, that was uh, way high. What the hell's going on here? Okay, scope's good and tight. I don't really change the mounts any. Uh, mounting options, that's uh, I'm not sure what the hell's going on here. Oh, this is totally patterning different than I did earlier. Uh, unexpected and I'm not sure why so uh, we'll see okay so here are our round one results just remember uh, pinks are the first five shot group green are the second five shot group and as we went through this when I got to the federal the tail end of the federal on the second pass I had a real big focus shift on the site mark wraith refocused it and it was enough that I remembered it. And then when I went on to shoot the Winchester, the patterning seemed way off from where I felt it should have been. Okay. Enough so that I went and uh, here it is right here. You can see the difference. Enough so that I went back to the sight in target, took another five shots just to see if something had shifted. And what you see here is the pink is uh, the original final shots for sight in. Orange is where I ended up at. Okay. Uh, so not sure what's going on there, but definitely an issue. Now, uh, we're going to go ahead. I, at this point, I had 100 rounds fired. Need to burn another 100 to 200 rounds. So I'm just going to show you a little bit of that, and then we'll get to round two. So, uh, did another full cleaning on it, tore it down, cleaned it up, and let's see, by my count, we're at 120 rounds through the rifle. We're going to go ahead and burn another 20 rounds. Now, this is using the, the second magazine. This is the original magazine fully loaded. Uh, last load was the uh, last load was one of these five dollar uh, used magazines that are still available for a pretty reasonable price. So let's see, let's see where we're at here. Uh, that's what we need to do. Okay, we're going to be shooting at the uh, same uh, same target as before. Our uh, larger little uh, shoot and see dirty bird whatever uh, silhouette target that we put orange stickers on now so
it's drifting on this drifting a little on this wraith, so. And that's it. Another 20 rounds. It's a shame. Okay, we're back and we've got all three cameras recording. And we currently have 170 rounds through the PTR and we just finished cleaning it again. And I think I'm going to burn another 30, and then we're going to call it a day. That'll be the minimum break-in of 200 rounds, and we'll see if I got the gumption to come back and burn another 100 rounds or just come back and actually do the testing to see how things shape up. So here we go, last uh, 30 for the day, put it 200 rounds through the PTR. Let me say we just dump. Funny, huh? And then let's go ahead and mess with the focus on the sight mark wraith. Yay! go 30 rounds fast. Ooh, smoking. And we will leave this puppy cool for a while. Let me go ahead and shut off the site mark race recording. Okay, quick intermission. I did end up going back to the range and burning 80 rounds and I was going to do ammo testing, but it was windy, wasn't having much luck with my rest, so I called it off at 280 and we'll start back later. Okay, here we are at the final round of ammunition testing, and at this point we've already got 280 rounds through the PTR-91. Now, uh, testing is being done the same way as it was before. Five round groups cycled through each of the ammo types, then went the opposite uh, order to do another five round group. Now, uh, the catch is, I'm only going to show you the last 10 rounds that I did, and what I did was on the last five rounds for each ammunition type, I changed out the mount. I decided to go with a Primo group therapy mount that's been modified to be a lot more beefy. And uh, the reason I did that is too many issues with uh, the Wraith and focusing. And a little bit of question on my own marksmanship uh, may be coming to bear in some of the test results. So anyway, uh, so here's your chance to see a different rest uh Primo group therapy, and if you want to skip all this and just jump right to the targets, uh, go to the timestamp uh, shown right now, and uh, that'll bypass this section of the video. 
Okay, we're back for our last 10 rounds, and we have up next is five rounds Winchester, then five rounds Federal, and we'll be shooting at the appropriate targets this time, uh, downrange. Oh, I guess that ain't more spin, is it? So let's do this. Okay, you know now, I just had this Wraith in focus, and me charging the weapon threw this thing off, okay? I'm just making this, uh, pointing this out as we're doing this. Now, I've noticed it's not jumped as much out of focus with me having this thing totally locked down hard versus holding it and, and uh, having a little bit of, you know, things flexing around a little bit. So anyway, uh, let's start recording on this. Make sure we are in good focus starting off. So yeah, this thing still I think has focus issues. Okay. So here we go. Winchester, 180 gray. So it helps I take safety off. Ah, I'm trying to get a quick feel here without affecting stuff. shots and now this darn Wraith is playing this game with going back out of focus on me. seeing where these are going. And unfortunately this image isn't that good in this roof in the first place with the 3x digital on it, so. Okay, there's our five rounds with the Winchester ammunition. Let's go back to safe. I want to see where these hit real quick. Because I can see definitely better through. Okay, I see C3. I can't see the other two unless they maybe went through the, uh, went on to some of the other pink spots because they do tend to be grouped in that area pretty good. Okay, so we've got five rounds left. Let's uh, move over and shoot the federal. Then we'll go down range and see what we have. Federal. showing out of the federal here and there you have it okay <clears throat> let me go ahead open the 
bolt. Let's just cool down. Get your magazine out. Okay, time for the good, the bad, and the ugly of our ammunition testing and our final results, okay? A uh, couple of disclaimers, sight mark wraith, that gave me a lot of fits, had focus shift, focusing issues as we went through the testing. That may have negatively impacted us a bit. And also, uh, my marksmanship skills, okay? So as we're going through these, you'll notice I did the five shot groups and then four out of five and throwing out the flyers. To me, the uh, four out of five numbers are more representative than the others because that helps to eliminate me from the picture. Okay. Uh, that being said, uh, look at the numbers. They kind of speak for themselves. One thing I will say is I had better group sizes with Silver Baron Tall, which are 145 and 150 grain ammunition, uh, than I did with the Federal and Winchester 180 grain soft points. And I believe the primary reason for that is this rifle was designed for military ball ammunition, 140, 147 grain weight. And I think in going with the heavier weights, uh, I think maybe that actually opened up the pattern just a little bit. That's just what I suspect. I'll have to do some more uh, testing and I might do that and post it. So anyway, uh, bigger groups with the heavier ammunition is kind of my takeaway. So... Looking at the Winchester target, here's where I had this big focus shift and impact shift with the sight mark wraith. The top bullseye, the pink, is the initial group. Then right before I shot that uh, green group on the top is where I had a major shift, okay? And you'll see this in just a minute on our dial-in target. Now, uh, let's look at our overall numbers, okay? Uh, basically, five shot. Versus four shot, we had 2.99 versus 1.9 inches for the 150 grain tall and silver bear, and 3.18 versus 2.45 for the Federal and Winchester. Overall, for all of it, uh, five round group averages three inches, four out of five rounds, 2.18. Okay, not bad for a battle rifle, even if there are some other factors giving us a hard time here. Okay, uh, look at this. This is the target that I used to sight it in right before I started testing in this whole process. Final two shots are in pink on the bottom. After I had that focus shift, which was very noticeable, an impact shift, I shot five rounds again on this target. This is nothing changed, okay? And notice the difference. Yes, we did have an impact shift. Uh, hands down, the wraith shifted on me. And everything was tight. Now, uh, so did the wraith affect our testing and any result of this? Maybe not, but just the fact that I have to question that really makes me wonder. Okay, so there you have it, uh, PTR and the Wraith. Okay, time for one last blast. Let's do a mag dump. Okay, pardon the gunfire or noise you hear in the background. I have company here at the range. Uh, somebody out there with a the pistol berm. And uh, what we're going to do is, of course, uh, I don't know if I'd call all of this a success with uh, between my abilities and uh, not being very happy with the sight mark rate. But uh, what video would uh, be complete without uh, dumping a little bit of ammunition through a rifle of this nature? So uh, as you can see, we're wraithless. And I'm, just, I'm not sighted into battle sites because my vision isn't that good. But uh, I always like using the 200 meter peep because I love the peeps on these uh, HK style weapons. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to, I've got one in the pipe and 20 in the mag and we're just going to dump some ammunition to it because I think we, uh, you earned it and I earned it going through all this mess with this darn uh, rape. So let's have at it. There you have it, PTR 91. Still a hell of a lot of fun to shoot, that puts a smile on my face. So, 
we'll let it cool and uh, we might play around with something else. I hope you enjoyed the PTR 91 Sight Mark Wraith video. Uh, if you did, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. It helps to keep me motivated. Uh, this channel is not financially funded by anybody aside from myself, so a little bit of motivation goes a long way. Uh, all that being said, this video is copyrighted by Phoenix Rising and this channel. It's free for educational or personal use. However, commercial use needs to get my written express permission. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you around.